pray a moment. Okay. Father, uh, thank you for Jesus, who is our Savior and Christ. Jesus is the way and truth and life. Without Jesus, we cannot but wonder. Uh, Father, uh, please help us to follow Jesus and learn Jesus. Uh, thank you for blessing uh, us to study the book of uh, Nehemiah from today. Uh, please grant us uh, <clears throat> uh, prayer spirit like uh, Nehemiah. This generation is very uh, difficult, uh, but uh, help us not to uh, be uh, <clears throat> frustrated. Uh, Father, uh, please fill our hearts with broken heart and prayer spirit uh, to uh, make a revival like Nehemiah. Please bless this time. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Yeah, Alan is coming. Uh, uh, hello, Alan. How are you? Uh, hello, good morning. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. What time is it now in Hong Kong? Uh, 6.35 in uh, the morning. Six. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John is coming from Brazil. Oh, yeah. Uh, how, how was the conference in Hong Kong? Uh, it's great. We are we were studying chapter uh, uh John, mm. studying uh, the Gospel John. Oh. chapter 13, 14, and sixteen. Uh, three days and uh, two mm. nights. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's good. <laughs> mm. Good. How many attended? Uh, around uh, 20, 20 something to thirty, I think. Mm. Uh, around 30. Mm. All together, all the uh, chapters in Hong Kong? Yeah, yeah. We are now only having one chapter. Uh, mm. Before there are more, but now it's only one. And mm. we all get it together for worship and to have the same conference. Mm. Mm. Good. Okay. Thank God. Yeah, uh, thank today we'll study the book of Nehemiah chapter 1. Mm. Uh, in... Uh, 587, hmm. uh, the southern Judah was destroyed by Babylonia, hmm. and uh, many uh, Israelites were carried as an exile to Babylonia. For 70 years, they had been slaves as an exile. Uh, they had been humiliated a lot. Mm. Uh, there were uh, some prominent person, uh, for example, Daniel, Sadrach, Mesach, Abednego, uh, they became a leader, leaders in Babylon. And Esther was made queen in the court of a Persian king. But most of the people uh, became exiles. Uh, it was the training time for his people, but the Lord promised that after 70 years, uh, God would uh, make them return to Jerusalem. So God uh, was very faithful. Hello, John. How are you? Yeah. So, Hello. yeah, God uh, blessed them uh, to come back to Jerusalem. Yeah. So, uh, BC 537, uh, they returned and uh, they built the temple of God again. Uh, and three times they returned. Uh, firstly, Surupabel brought the people. Uh, mm, the number was... Uh, 42,360. Uh, and later, uh, Ezra brought uh, the people, including Lubais. At the time, the number was uh, 1.500, uh, 1, uh, 1,500. And uh, thirdly, Nehemiah uh, brought some people. Uh, to Jerusalem to 
rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Even though the temple of God was restored, the wall of Jerusalem uh, uh, had been in ruin. Yeah. So the wall of Jerusalem uh, mm, uh, were still in uh, rubble for 150 years, 150 years, eh? just to be just after destruction of uh, uh, Judah. Uh, it's a long time, long time. Mm. The war of Jerusalem is very important because uh, the war of Jerusalem uh, is the protection of uh, the temple of God. Uh, uh, uh. The enemies could attack uh, Israel and Jerusalem because there is there was no uh, war of Jerusalem, and the war of Jerusalem signifies the glory of God, glory of God. For one hundred uh, yeah fifty years, uh, the war of Jerusalem was broken down. It means that uh, God's glory had been uh, broken down. Mm. At the time, Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem and rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem uh, for uh, 52 days. Wow, 52 days. Yeah. For 150 years, the wall of Jerusalem had been ruined. But uh, only with uh, 52 days, he restored. Mm. It was a miracle. It was the great work of God. And uh, God uh, blessed Nehemiah's uh, spirit. And uh, there had been a lot of obstacles and hindrance, enemies about it. However, uh, Nehemiah overcame all things and he fulfilled. So, uh, through the study of Nehemiah, we can learn Nehemiah's spiritual leadership. Especially chapter 1 teaches us Nehemiah's prayer spirit. He started uh, the revival work uh, with prayer, with prayer. So uh, we want to uh, serve God's work effectively. But the most important thing is prayer, not by human wisdom or any political uh, strategy. Uh, mm. Okay. Mm. Sophia, would you uh, answer question number one? Yes. Um, it says, when and where was Nehemiah? Um, what, and what shocking news did he receive? So um, it was, it happened in the month of Chislev in the 20th year. Mm. Uh, as I was, and Nehemiah was in Susa, mm. Citadel, Citadel, and mm. at that time he was a cupbearer for the king, so mm. he was a pretty high official, I guess. Mm. And mm. what shocking news did he receive? He received the news that from that from Han and I, um, that um, the remnant. The, um, the remnant there in the province who, uh, oh, he said that the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. So mm. he heard the news that the wall of Jerusalem was broken down. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Nehemiah was uh, the third generation. Uh, he was, uh, he might be born in Persia. So he had uh, never uh, been to Jerusalem. Uh, even though he was an exile, he uh, became a cupbearer. It means that um, he was very successful. It's like uh, Korean second gen or third gen uh, is working in White House uh, as a secretary, <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. Koreans are not uh, exiled, only immigrant. Huh? So, but it is so difficult. But as an exile, uh, Nehemiah uh, became a cupbearer. Huh? Two uh, kings. Uh, 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, there had been a lot of assassination uh, due to the poisonous uh, water, wine, food. Uh, yeah. Mm, in verse uh, in this time who is the king? Uh, king the king was Artaxerxes eh? and uh, the father of Artaxerxes uh, Cersei Curtis uh, he, he was the husband of Esther, Esther, huh? and he uh, might be assassinated. Many scholars assume that. So, uh, only uh, those who are very trustworthy can be cupbearer. So, we can realize that how uh, excellent and prominent and trustworthy and honest Nehemiah was. He was a very great man. He uh, succeeded. Uh, and one day he listened to the sad news from his relative, uh, Hanani. Uh, according to verse 3, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. Yeah. Uh, it's very uh, sorrowful news. Uh, but that uh, bad news is not related to Nehemiah. He got a good job. Uh, he could be happy in his palace life. Uh, never mind. Uh, however, even though his body was in the palace, his heart was uh, was in Jerusalem always. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Sophia, when you listen to the news of Korea, for example, North Korea launched a missile in the uh, East Sea uh, by threatening South Korea, what do you feel? I think it's unfortunate. Uh, um, I think that is not that. Um, I feel concerned over it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you can worry about your uh, relatives, huh? grandparents uh, like that. Uh, but some people think that, oh, I'm lucky. I'm, <laughs> I'm in America, so I'm safe. No problem. <laughs> yeah. All the people, most of the people are self-centered. Uh, when the North Korea tried to attack South Korea, many Korean people uh, tried to uh, immigrate to the foreign land. Uh, but what did uh, Nehemiah do? Uh, question number two. Uh, Shepard Alan, would you answer question number two? Uh, yeah, sure. Mm. What was the extent of his grief? Mm. Uh, when he heard these things, he sat down and wept. Uh, he's so sorrowful and he wept. Mm. Uh, and for some days, he mourned and fast and prayed before the God of heaven. Mm. Mm. Uh, he really wants something that God can help uh, mm. to to change the situation uh, of mm. the, the, uh, his hometown. Mm. So uh, that's why he prayed. And mm. to whom did he go and in his grave? Mm. Uh, he go to God, he go to God, but but not anyone. Uh, mm. He prayed that, uh, oh Lord, God of heaven, 
the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love mm -hmm. with those who love him and obey his commands. Mm -hmm. So he pray and he really thinks that only God can help. So he pray for God's mercy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. When I heard these things, I sat down, wept. For some days, I moaned and fasted and prayed before God. How many uh, days? 40 days. Uh, he prayed for 40 days. Uh, yeah. Wow. He fasted. He wept. He moaned and he prayed. Uh, his position was not uh, swayed. There's no any um, difficulties in his job. He could enjoy uh, Persian life. But he, when uh, hearing sad news, he sat down, wept, moaned, fasted, and prayed. Wow. Allah, through that, what can what can you learn from uh, Nehemiah? Uh, I'm just thinking. Uh, we, <laughs> I'm getting older and older. There are many problems, and mm. some sometimes the things are so sorrowful. Uh, mm. As a human, uh, I sometimes will think of uh, to uh, handling the charges uh, to mm. tackle it. Uh, by by myself, by my mm. experience, or to find someone mm. and to solve the, the problem. And but sometimes I, I forgot uh, uh, to rely on God Himself. Mm. Uh, but uh, through His prayer, uh, mm. we know that everything uh, comes from God and mm. never from you. So, uh, and and one other thing is that uh, I will think of. Uh, is there a is there a um, uh, an event that uh, an issue that uh, God want to remind me uh, mm. to to go back to Him? Uh, mm. Is that uh, uh, I focus more on myself? Mm. Uh, I ignore the others. I ignore God, mm. and uh, I, I will think of this. So uh, I learned that I, I have to to go back to God, and mm. whenever things that uh, I'm not as successful, I'm not smooth, and goes against my, my will uh, and difficulties. I, I have to come to God to mm. pray. And uh, yeah. Mm. And then, yeah. Uh, how, how many children do you have? Uh, two. Two. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you love your children. So if your children are sick, uh, I think that you and your wife. Uh, uh, became very sad and pray honestly for yeah. their recovery <laughs> like yeah. that. In Korea, uh, two days ago, there was the Korean SAT exam. It's very important for entering university. So uh, before uh, the exam, the church uh, were crowded with many parents for praying. <laughs> Lord, please grant my children good score. <laughs> but after the uh, uh, exam, the uh, prayer hall became empty. <laughs> For their uh, children's success, they pray eh? a lot. Uh, but uh, Nehemiah uh, prayed the full his country, uh, because his country is priestly nation. Uh, his people uh, is God's people, God's people. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it means that he was God-centered, God-centered. He loved the Lord so much. Uh, yeah, and he prayed uh before the God of heaven he said Lord the God of heaven what does it mean the God of heaven 
God of heaven means uh, the Lord uh, reigns over uh, all the uh, earth uh, and heaven and earth and universe. Yeah? Uh, because uh, the world of Jerusalem was burnt down, he could complain, Oh Lord, why uh, do you ignore your people? Huh? Until the world of Jerusalem had been broken down. The God of Israel seemed to be powerless. However, he uh, uh, remembered that his God is the God of heaven. And he is the great and awesome God. Great and awesome. It means great. Regardless of the situation, uh, the Lord is great and awesome. God is not uh, changeable. God is the same the, in the past, now, and forever. Always. Yeah. Always sun is shining uh, over the clouds. Like our God is same. God of heaven. He is the great and awesome God. Uh, he believed uh, the power of God. The disaster on the Israel uh, comes from their sins, their sins, their ancestors' sins, uh, his people's sins, not God's uh, powerlessness. Yeah, rather he held uh, God's power. Yeah, it's necessary uh, for us to remember. God's power always in any situation. Yeah. When we succeed, when we lucky and fortunate, we think that oh my God is powerful, my God is good. Yeah. But it's wrong. Our God is always uh, great and awesome. Mm. This this verse, uh, uh, this words. Uh, is very repeated many times in the book of Nehemiah. A great and awesome God. Whenever he faced the difficulties, he mentioned, Oh, uh, our Lord, the God of heaven, uh, the great and awesome God. Uh, our God is in heaven and he is great and awesome. Mm. His authority, his sovereignty, his power. Uh, it's not changed. All is same. Mm. Satan tries to uh, plant doubt about God's love and God's power, but we should sustain, we should uh, continue to hold on God's power and God's authority. Uh, our God is heaven and uh, He is great and awesome. Especially God keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keeps his commandments. Yeah. He remembered uh, God keeps his covenant. Uh, from the from Abraham, from the year of Abraham, God made a covenant with his people. Especially uh, when the Israelites was uh, redeemed from uh, Egypt, uh, God uh, proclaimed that the Israelites is the Christian nation, holy, holy people. In Exodus chapter 19, uh, God made covenant with Israel in the Mount Sinai. God proclaimed. Uh, because God made a covenant uh, yeah, uh, he cannot but keep the covenant. A covenant is like a marriage. 
marriage. If the uh, bride and bridegroom, uh, if they are married, uh, the relationship cannot be swayed. Yeah? Always in happy time or unhappy time, uh, they are uh, love relationship. Yeah? It should be uh, kept. Yeah. Israelites was not faithful to the Lord, who is a spiritual uh, bridegroom. However, God has been faithful always, always. Yeah. Especially uh, the, the characteristic of uh, covenant is uh, co covenant of love, covenant of love, yeah. covenant of compassion. God's character is love and compassion. Uh, so he, uh, Nehemiah, held uh, this characteristic. Oh Lord, you made a covenant with us with love and compassion. So please remember your uh, covenant and reveal your love and compassion. Even though we don't deserve to be loved because of our sins. Yeah. Uh, the children uh, go to their parents uh, when they feel uh, now weak, when they, they need something. Uh, they are not good, but they go to uh, their parents because they believe that uh, uh, their parents are merciful and uh, lovely and yeah, compassionate. Daddy, my, my mommy, please, please, <laughs> like that. Then uh, father and mother uh, accept them. You did not do uh, homework, so I will not give money. <laughs> the, the parents do not uh, like that. Huh? The parents accept love. Huh? bear all the shortcomings and weak points. Yeah. Uh, so Nehemiah understood God's heart. Some people misunderstood God's uh, character. Oh, God is very legalistic. He would not uh, accept me. So they do not pray. They give up. I uh, have been mm, sinful. I sinned a lot. I don't deserve, so I cannot go to the Lord. Yeah? Even God uh, will reject me, ignore me. So I need not pray to the Lord. It is wrong. It is wrong. Yeah? He does not uh, understand uh, God's heart. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, the prodigal son, he waste, wasted all the money. And uh, he became a beggar. He became a miserable. Uh, he was unworthy to come back to his father's house. But he rose up and he returned. And uh, his father accepted him. His father made a great banquet and blessed him. Uh, bring the good clothes and shoes. Uh, yeah. And uh, he made a festival with delicious food. Delicious food. Wonderful. Yeah. It is the God's heart. God's heart. Uh, so, Nehemiah uh, brought uh, his uh, problem to uh, to the Lord, who is uh, merciful, compassionate. Yeah, he realized that because of uh, his ancestors and his uh, people's sin, uh, they had been humiliated. Uh, but he remembered God's covenant and God's grace and God's mercy and earnestly, he earnestly prayed to the Lord. Uh, our Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, 
who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, John, would you answer question number three? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what did he do first before he prayed to God? So, in verses six and seven, he mm -hmm. confesses mm -hmm. uh, the sins of the mm -hmm. Israelites. Also, would you uh, read the verse him? six and seven, John? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer. Your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the mm -hmm. people of Israel. I mm -hmm. confess the sins with Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have mm -hmm. committed against you. Mm -hmm. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, why do you think uh, he uh, repented? Uh, not his own sin, but uh, his people's sin, ancestors' sin. Uh, oh. Sophia, uh, would you open the Bible? Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. Would you read? Isaiah chapter uh, 59. Uh, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah five, yes. yeah, 59, 1 and 2. Um, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Okay. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to, to save. Uh, yeah, God's power can save us huh? but uh your iniquities your sins have separated you from uh, your god because of our sins we cannot uh, uh, receive god's power huh? sin uh separates us from god so when we repent our sins our relationship can be reconciled. So, Nehemiah repented. His people's sin, his ancestors' sin. My people, my ancestors, he said. It means he included himself. He could say, oh, uh, I did not sin. Their sins Please forgive their sins. But he said, please uh, forgive our sins, our ancestors' sins. He took all the iniquities, sins on his body, like Jesus. Yeah? On the cross, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them because they do not know what to do, what they are doing. Yeah? Uh, Jesus was a sinless, but Jesus took all the people's iniquities on his body. Yeah. Likewise, Nehemiah uh, took all the people's sin and he went to the Lord. Lord, please. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. His prayer is a priestly prayer, priestly prayer. prayer. Yeah. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. We have been disobedient. We sinned a lot. But please forgive us. He prayed honestly. Yeah. And what prom? Yeah, okay. Second question, John. Yeah. Uh, what promises did he hold on to as he prayed to God? Hmm. So yeah. Please read verse eight and nine. Yeah. Uh, remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, 
If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if you exile people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Hmm. And remember the instruction you gave your servants Moses. Uh, hearing, if you are unfaithful, uh, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and repent and obey my commands, then even if your exiles people are in the farthest horizon, I will gather them from the uh, far farthest horizon and bring them to the place I have chosen as I dwelling for my name. Mm. God is righteous. So uh, God cannot but uh, punish uh, those who are sinful. But if they repent and return to the Lord, God will gather them, collect them from the farthest to the end of the earth. Because of sins, God punished the Israelites, so they were scattered to many places. In the book of Exodus, where uh, they, uh, where did the Israelites live? In Egypt, in the land of Gosen. Hmm. The that place they lived together. So, uh, in the 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 place was the. Uh, near to the borderline of Egypt. So they could come, come out of quickly together. But uh, the Babylonia uh, carried the Israelites and scattered them, scattered here and there. They made them, uh, lest them, lest they should uh, gather together. So difficult. But in order to fulfill God's promise, God gathered all of them. And God used uh, King Cyrus, the king of uh, Persia. And through King Cyrus, uh, God uh, made them return to Jerusalem. Yeah. This uh, promise is uh, written in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Huh? If you sin, I will scatter you. Huh? But if you return to me and repent, I will gather huh? uh, you. So, uh, Nehemiah held God's promise, God's covenant. We sinned, so we were scattered. But now, uh, we repent and please keep your promise and please gather uh, them uh, to the uh, uh, dwelling for your name. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, Nehemiah understood the word of God, the intention of God. So, uh, he had a broken heart and uh, he was like a mediator, mediator, mediator uh, between God and his people. Uh, spiritual leader should have that kind of mind. Uh, intercessory prayer and, yeah, as a med mediator. Okay, uh, question number four. Four. Uh, uh, Sophia, would you answer question number four? Yes. Um, it says, uh, what efforts did he make to reconcile God's relationship with the people of Israel? Um, mm. Verse 10 and 11a. Mm. 
It says, they are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. Mm. Oh, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name and give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Mm. So um, um, Nehemiah knows God's care, understands God's character and knows that mm. God is a merciful, compassionate God. Mm. So he um, says, God, remember your covenant with us. Mm. So, so, and that's how he mm. says. And also just like in the previous verses, how he repents in behalf of the other people, because he knows that when we repent, God hears us. Mm. Yeah. Good. He and said, then the second... Yeah. Sorry. Mm, good. Okay. Go ahead. Um, in the second part, it says, why did he pray and that he might have success in 11b? Um, because he knows that um, with his own strength, he is weak, even though like maybe social status wise, he might seem like a important man. He's like the cupbearer of a king, but he knows that before God, he is weak and cannot do anything. So he needs to ask God for help mm. because through God, he could do great things. Mm, good. Thank you. Yeah, he prayed. They are your servants and your people. Yeah. Even though they sinned, they are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your might hand. How many times you? Your servants, your people, you redeemed by your great strength and your might hand five times. Your, your. Uh, uh, when uh, a father uh, is angry about rebellious uh, uh, son, uh, he can be angry. Uh, 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 Go out! You, you are my son. <laughs> But at the time, uh, a mother uh, uh, said that, oh, honey, he's your son. <laughs> your son. <laughs> huh? uh, she tries to uh, make a uh, reconcile. Huh? Yeah. Even though a father is angry about his son, uh, his uh, real heart is not abandoned him. Hmm? Uh, in worldly, a father loves his son. So there should be a uh, mediator, reconciliator. Please remember Exodus chapter 32. After Exodus, uh, Moses went to the Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. At the time, the Israelites uh, degenerated. They made a golden calf and they worshipped the golden calf. It is our God. And they made a very uh, sinful festival. It was great to sin. Yeah. Returning to his people, uh, Moses became very angry and he broke the stone and he rebuked uh, his people. Yeah. And the Lord uh, was angry about his people and he said to Moses, Moses, uh, I cannot uh, bring them to the promised land. Yeah? I will wipe out yeah, all of them and I will make you new people. At the time, what did Moses pray? Lord, they are your people. Please uh, forgive them. If you punish them, the Gentiles uh, will ridicule you. For your glory, please be patient and please accept them. If you do not accept them, please erase my name in the uh, list of uh, uh, life and please uh, save them. And God accepted Moses' Moses's prayer and God uh, 
uh, gave compassion on them. Yeah, Moses became a mediator at the time. Yeah, it's similar. Likewise, uh, Nehemiah prayed for them. His prayer moved the heart, the heart of God, God's heart. Yeah, they are your servants. They are your people. You redeemed these people by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant, uh, to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by rating him favor in the presence of this man. Yeah. He emphasized the relationship with his people and Nehemiah himself. Yeah. Mm. So Nehemiah was a real shepherd, good shepherd, good shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. He loved God and he loved his people. And he tries to make a reconciliation somehow uh, through prayer. How many days? For 40 days. For 40 days. He prayed again and again. Yeah. Um, praying honestly, he entered the deep world of spirituality. He made a strong and deep friendship with God. And he could be encouraged and he could have a conviction that God would uh, restore them. And uh, God might to him wisdom and strategy. Uh, he was a cupbearer of a king. He was in Susa. His place is far. Too far, 1,500 kilometers. It took uh, uh, three, three or four months uh, to Susa, to Jerusalem. It took, uh, uh, he was very busy in the palace. How can he uh, help? Uh, in rebuild, rebuilding work. He prayed honestly. And uh, next week we can uh, acknowledge that he asked the king uh, uh, to uh, let him return to Jerusalem. And it, it was, uh, it was, it can be done. Uh, through prayer, uh, uh, God uh, moved the hearts of king and God uh, moved the hearts of people and they rose and participated in the building world. Yeah. So, Nehemiah chapter 1 is Nehemiah's prayer. prayer. He did not act anything. He only prayed. He concentrated on prayer itself. We think we should uh, act with things huh, for the great things. But the first step is uh, prayer. Why? Huh? We cannot do by myself, by ourselves. We need God's help. Without God's help, we cannot do anything. So if we expect great things, great and awesome things, we should pray. Pray honestly. Prayer is the expression of our humility and our faith Yeah, uh, to be deeply connected with God. Mm. Especially when we pray, we should be humble uh, uh, by repenting our sins 
our ships sin, our children's ship, our uh, country's sins, this world's sin. And uh, we have to hold God's promise, God's covenant, God's grace, and God's compassion. Then God is pleased with it. God reveals his glory and his power. Okay. Mm. John, what, what what did you learn from today's passage? Um, yeah, I learned that uh, prayer in mm. first place mm. is very important mm. because, yeah, whatever problems or whatever tribulations may happen, mm. uh, I just need to recognize that everything mm. comes from God. So that's why prayer should come first. Mm. And yeah, that's one thing that is really hard for me because if anything, I don't know, troubling ha happens to me, I just try to do something by mm. my own. I, I I don't have this habit of praying in first mm. place. So yeah, mm. I just mm. learned that I need to have this humble heart mm. uh, to uh, yeah confess my sins and depend on God all mm. times. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, Shepard Alan, any comment? Uh, I learned that um, for prayers, sometimes, mm. not sometimes, many times, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will pray uh, for the things that uh, uh, is near to me, that uh, I pray for my work, my children, mm. but uh, not for sin, but uh, uh, for something a good to happen, uh, mm. God can lead my way, uh, mm. whatever. But uh, I think uh, I learned from Nehemiah is super hard, and mm. he, he, even though uh, it is not his problem, uh, mm. not his sins, mm. uh, his children, his sheep, he prayed mm. for them earnestly. Mm. Uh, for real case, recently uh, there is a, a quarrel between. Uh, our fellowship, uh, uh, but not me. Uh, it's from one shepherd to another because uh, one shepherd did something, uh, and other shepherd thing is not is not good. Uh, mm. I I feel sad, but I I don't know. I I I don't know what actually I I could do. Uh, mm. In fact, but I learned that I have to pray and mm. pray for both of them uh, because. I, I know that there may be there, there may be seen mm. uh, some somewhere uh uh that these the things happen and maybe maybe one is not doing right uh, but mm. another one is not doing correctly uh, mm. uh in the meantime mm. so uh I, I I don't say that uh I use this example not because uh, I think I'm good there but I'm not I think that I have to to pray uh, not only for myself, but uh, mm. for the others, for the other scene, so that we can be a good community, uh, uh, an instrument mm. uh, that uh, we, we can serve God uh, together. Mm. Uh, uh, and also for my children and my sheep. Uh, mm. Sometimes for those sheep, uh, actually, I have not started Bible study with them, just go fishing and uh, leave contact. And I contact them, and uh, there's no response. And sometimes I will say, ah, then uh, leave sometime, leave sometime, and maybe later I contact again, and uh, uh, they will respond. But mm. after some time, uh, um, my heart for them uh, lost because uh, I, I didn't, I even didn't remember their names. So mm. I repent uh, that I have to always remember they are God's people and pray for them. Mm, good thank you uh i don't know uh, exactly the work of hong kong but mm. uh, it needs uh revival hong kong ministry yeah. <laughs> yeah. and hong kong the country hong kong have has a lot of problems due to relationship with the china and 
something like that. So uh, if we pray honestly for them, you can be uh, near Maya <laughs> in the Hong Kong UBF and the Hong, mm. Hong Kong, country Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sophia, any comment? Okay. I have to go in one minute, but what mm. I learned is um, sometimes I feel like helpless and weak because I mm. feel like I'm just like a kid. <laughs> I like a high schooler and I can't do much, but I mm. learned that it's important for me to um, pray because um, when we pray, then God could do great things through us. Mm. And also sometimes I feel like there's so many bad things happening in the road, but I realize that um, mm. like what stood out to me is like you said of how God has all the power over everything. Mm. And so that reminded me to always hold on to the truth, knowing that God is better than anything and that he is in control of all things. So we just have to humble ourselves before him and cry out for him, to mm. him for help. So that's what I learned. Good. Thank you. Yeah. David, can you say anything? <coughs> Hmm. Probably David and Jose, uh, they cannot speak. Okay, Shepherd Alan, please pray for us. Yeah, now. Yeah. Oh, okay, and let's yeah. pray. <clears throat> and dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you uh, for uh, giving us the chance uh, to study the book of Nehemiah this time. Mm. Uh, and for uh, Nehemiah's prayer, mm. even though he was a bearer, he mm. concerned his people mm. and he concerned uh, his nation and he loved his people. So even though uh, he is he's good, but he uh, prayed for his people. Mm. He always uh, think that uh, God, you, you are good at all the time. Mm. He, uh, he believed in, in your love and passion mm. and, and pray for the sin uh, of his people. Mm. Lord, uh, please grant us the shepherd heart. Mm. Uh, we are not focusing on ourselves only, uh, even though we are doing good, but we have to think uh, uh, of your uh, passion, mm. not over us, but uh, over the sinners. Mm. Lord, uh, we were appointed by you, uh, we were loved by you, mm. uh, so that we may love uh, one another and to lead them uh, to God and repent from their sins. Lord, please uh, help us to pray. Mm. Uh, we have no other ways uh, we can do the things we can do is limited, but mm. we can pray. Uh, when we pray and on your own purpose mm. and uh, by uh, by your will, and you will surely uh, show your power and love and passion uh, mm. over the sinners. Lord, uh, please uh, bless uh, the ministry in mm. Korea, in Brazil, and Hong Kong, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if your servant, so that we may have a prayer heart to always pray uh, for our people, and you will bless them abundantly, and uh, so that the word of God and uh, maybe uh, first uh, filled with filled in our heart, and then can be spread. Uh, Lord, I uh, thank you uh, today. Uh, this uh, Bible study, and may you continue to bless Shepherd uh, Nehemiah with a great shepherd heart to mm -hmm. serve the ministry and career and the world. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank God bless you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, see you next week. See you. Yeah, see you. Yeah, see you. Yeah, see you.